Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Here are our top stories. It's all a PSYOP. The threat fusion centers, the militarization of police, military on the streets, TSA on the streets. It's all a conditioning program to train the American people to accept what is only normal in third world dictatorships. Will we allow our journey towards despotism and tyranny to be complete, or will we turn the situation around? And speaking of and warning us about the dangers of a permanent standing military, James Madison, the author of the Bill of Rights, said this. He said, a standing military force combined with an overgrown executive will not long be safe companions for liberty. In other words, they're going to destroy liberty. And he goes on to say, the means of defense against foreign danger, standing armies, have always been the instruments of tyranny at home. Are we about to see that? Of course, we've had permanent wars. We've had a standing army since World War II. It's never stood down. And we have an executive who rules by executive order, unashamedly, getting more and more aggressive, more and more overgrown. And of course, it was Eisenhower who warned us in his parting speech saying that, yeah, we've always taken the military down after a conflict. We're not doing it now because of technology. But that very technology and the fact that we have a military industrial complex that makes money off of that technology and the fact that we have the research at universities and private corporations will be taken over by the military industrial complex. He said that presents a very different kind of danger to us. And so we understand that human nature doesn't change. That's why Madison could see this. That's why they put these uh, pr uh, proscriptions against a standing military, a permanent military in the Constitution. We ignore the Constitution to our peril, and yet we see that it is still being rolled out. Alex Jones is gonna talk about this in depth at the end of the program, but of course, today Stars and Stripes push back against the revelations that came out last week about Operation Jade Helm. They said that uh, there's a slideshow that they can't verify whether or not that slide is really genuine or not. Really? Officials at USA SOCOM were not able to immediately verify the authenticity of the slideshow because their computer firewalls prevented them from accessing the websites where the document appeared. So they couldn't see Drudge Report, for example. They couldn't see Scribed because that document is up on Scribed. It's not just our website that they're censoring. But, of course, they could easily say and they could easily deny that that's uh, not what was on there. But they didn't do that. And, of course, they go on to say that uh, they need to do this because they need to get out into new challenging terrain. And so this needs to take place outside of military bases. Let me say again that when Joe Biggs and I went to Fort AP Hill and we walked around in the replica of an American city, that was not training for a foreign war. And they have replicas of American cities and other bases like Camp Lejeune, which is more rural than the one at Fort AP Hill. That was really targeted more towards the kinds of structures that you'll see in a city and transportation infrastructure. The one in Camp Lejeune is more rural. They, however, have been training at the corner of First and Main. We stood there at a street that had street signs on it, said First and Main, had American uh, everything. Traffic lights, everything was Americanized. This was not a foreign city where they're training. Now they want to get out, however, into the actual territory. And of course, this is all part of a PSYOP, as we were told. This was an effort to see who's going to be on their side, how they can get us accustomed to seeing the military with a very large footprint, a very large presence. We've seen this with mass military operations throughout large American cities. When they did this in LA, they said, you know, you train under the scenario that you're going to be operating under. If you train, if you're gonna be operating in the mountains, you train the mountains. At the sea, you train at the sea or at the shore or in the desert or in a city with the cooperation and assistance of the police. I don't think they're going to get that when they go into Iran. But of course, it is an information war. As they pointed out in AP, the NATO commander said that the West must fight, and in this particular case, he's talking about Russia. They must fight Russia in an information war. He said the way to attack a false narrative is to drag the false premise into the light and expose it. Yes, but they don't, they're not interested in a debate. They don't want to address the issues. They don't want to address the concerns. And so they also have their uh, surrogates in the media, the mainstream media, like Fox News uh, coming out and warning people in Australia about how crazy it is 
for us to be concerned about these kinds of military operations. Doesn't that seem kind of strange to you? But of course, they're going to be doing that through regular Fox News as well. This is just the beginning. In uh, the news.com in Australia, they say conspiracy. U.S. Special Forces exercise said to be training for martial law and military coup. Now, this, of course, appeared in Australia, Malaysia, elsewhere. They say that uh, we're predicting that this is the beginning of a civil war. No, we're not. We're pointing out that they're taking their training to the next level. They've been working on unconventional warfare, on asymmetric warfare. They've been working on that in these centers. Asymmetric warfare is how you put down an insurgency in a country. That's against an indigenous population that doesn't have military arms, but it's still an uprising. And so when they have an asymmetric warfare center and they create American cities, they're planning on putting down an uprising in American cities, an uprising of citizens who are not armed the same way that they are, but who are determined that their country is not going to be taken over again. They say realist, realistic practice makes perfect. Yes, of course it does. And you train where you're going to be fighting. And listen to the way that Fox News represents in Australia, uh, represents our website. They say in a document detailing the U.S. Army's plan to wage war on the American people, this is a screaming far-right blog, InfoWars. See, we're not even a news organization. We're just a screaming far-right blog. That's the way it's being put out there to the Australians. But of course, you have to look at this map, and as Paul Joseph Watson pointed out, they're not taking back any of the labels, labeling things as hostile. And when you look at the map, it corresponds very closely to the kinds of political colors and political orientations that we see in America. Red state, blue state that they've been selling us for a very long time. That's the way that it's drawn. And of course, the redder the state, the more hostile in this SOCOM operation. Now, we also have shills that are not even in the mainstream media, shills that are in think tanks and approaching uh, and talking to conservatives, like the Heritage Foundation. They have a publication called The Daily Signal, and they have someone writing for them, uh, Stephen Bushy. They say he served for three decades as an Army Special Forces officer and a top Pentagon official. I would say he still is serving in that capacity as some kind of a bootlicking apologist for the militarist industrial complex. Now, this is someone who just wrote about the recent reintroduction of CISPA, which contains cyber threat intelligence interrogation centers. In other words, fusion centers for the NSA. He wrote in praise of those, and now he's writing, essentially setting up a, a, a straw man argument saying that these military exercises that are being proposed do not violate posse comitatus. Well, of course they don't. A training exercise doesn't violate it. But it is something we should be concerned about when they are training to violate posse comitatus. Do you understand the difference? We're not saying that this is the beginning of martial law. We're not saying that they are going to set themselves up as a militarized police, although it's getting more and more difficult to, un to recognize the boundaries between the military and the police as they preposition MRAPs amongst our police departments. We're saying that they're training in these centers like Fort AP Hill and Camp Lejeune. They're training for asymmetric warfare against the American people. And now they're taking it to the next level, going outside of the military bases. That's exactly what they're doing. But of course, he says that the proud patriots of the American Southwest and their elected officials should be congratulated for assisting this effort. No, they need to wake up. It's been a long time coming, and Alex is going to break this down for you. But of course, going back to 2009, there was my act report saying that they were training to take on the patriots and the people who had voted as libertarians. We also saw that uh, the founders are being characterized as radicals that today would be domestic terrorists. And then, of course, recently, Barrett Brown had his Declaration of Independence confiscated by the FBI, saying that that was evidence of his radical leanings because he had a copy of the Declaration of Independence. See, this is not something that is left or right wing. This is something we should all be very concerned about. And in the article on in Infowars.com, uh, Paul Joseph Watson breaks this down very well. He says that they have still, and this is the crux of the issue, they have still failed to address why Texas and Utah have been labeled hostile territory. He says the explanation that the U.S. Army cannot obtain an unclassified document associated with its own training exercise may be difficult for some to swallow. Boy, I couldn't put it any better. Here they, are, they have their own document for their own training exercise, and they will neither confirm nor deny what's in that document, even though it's been all over the internet 
they still pretend that it doesn't exist and make the claim that they can't see what we're talking about. They know exactly what we're talking about. And then he goes on to say, the exercise has drawn comparison to a 2012 scenario that was outlined by a retired army colonel in which the U.S. military is used to crush an insurgent rebellion that's overseen by Tea Party militia who take over the city of Darlington, South Carolina. We've reported on this many times. We have to understand that liberty is never given to us. Liberty is only taken. That's why we're not going to be able, as far as we look at the politics that's come out uh, today with Ted Cruz announcing his uh, run for presidency, that's why we can't send a Mr. Smith to Washington. He's not going to make everything all better. He can't shut down the tyrannical uh, bureaucracies that have taken on a life of their own. We have to start reasserting a constitutional government. That means a government with divided powers. That means a government where we can, using state nullification, which is a valid constitutional principle, we need to be able to shut down the tyrannical laws and the overreach of the federal government legally. And with jury nullification, we need to be able to shut down bad laws at both the federal and the state level. Until we are willing to do that, the rest of this stuff is, is really not much different than when uh, you go to the supermarket and you put your toddler in the, in the basket and they've got a wheel there that they can spin around. We're no longer driving this country. We're like the toddlers that have been given a wheel that doesn't connect to anything. We have to start taking back our liberty. And the way we do that is not by hoping that somebody's going to do the right thing if we elect enough of them to Washington. The way we do that is to block it down from the outside because Washington, unfortunately, is too far gone, too corrupt, too much power and influence and corruption in that area. Now, of course, the person that probably will go uh, to Washington as president next time is either going to be Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton. Look at this article that came out of uh, the Associated Press looking at his background in Florida. They said Jeb Bush aggressively used executive power as a Florida governor. He ruled as an executive tyrant as he criticizes Obama for doing so. Now, of course, his executive orders were things that the right could get behind like shutting down affirmative action or giving us tax increases. Can we understand the difference between agreeing with somebody over a particular issue and disagreeing with the way they do it? Disagreeing with the fact that they act as a tyrant instead of following the democratic process. That's what Jeb Bush did as Florida's governor. That's what, of course, Obama has done as president. Yet the left won't criticize Obama because they agree with what he did in a dictatorial fashion just as the right agreed with what Jeb Bush did in Florida in a dictatorial fashion. I don't want a dictator. Even if he's on the right side of the issues right now, he's going to be replaced further down the road with someone who is not on the right side of the issues. They pointed out that uh, he said at the time, we are doing the people's work, and I'm not going to let anybody for any reason stop us from doing that. Doesn't that sound an awful lot like Obama? Saying that the Republicans are just obstructing uh, he has to get something done, and he's not going to let them obstruct him. They say Bush was an aggressive chief, chief executive throughout his tenure in Florida, pushing the limits of executive authority, bristling at legislative oversight, willing to work around the courts. So he doesn't care what the courts say, what the legislature says. He's going to enact his agenda. And even if I agree with what he got done, I would disagree with him. But listen to what he says about Obama. He says, I think the next president is likely to undo much of the executive orders, particularly the ones where there was no constitutional authority to do these executive orders. That's what Jeb Bush is saying about that. Now, the New York Times points out that his reelection team in Florida, they consider Florida to be key. It has to be a cornerstone of the reelection. And so they have put together a team and understand what the code name of that team is. It's called Homeland Security. And as they point out, it seeks to try to neutralize two potentially grave but homegrown things. Threats. Yes, Homeland Security that was given to us by his brother was set up to take down homegrown threats, just like Jeb Bush is setting up his Homeland Security team initially to protect him politically. That's another part of it, continuity of government, or maybe we could say in the case of the Bushes, continuity of empire for their uh, little family clan. 
Now, Ted Cruz came out today and announced his uh, candidacy, candidacy for president. He's going to be making that announcement at Liberty University. I thought it was interesting and very telling that his first commercial, as Drudge pointed out, was in Spanish language only. And again, we see that uh, when we look at Luis Gutierrez, who just had an event in Southern California that was Spanish only, the right eviscerated him for that, and yet their candidate comes out with his first uh, speech in Spanish, his first commercial in Spanish. And I guess when we look at this, one of the things that I'm concerned about with Ted Cruz personally, what bothers me about him, is the fact that I don't think he's qualified under the Constitution to run for president, because I don't think, as I understand it, that he meets the qualifications for a natural born citizen. Now those are not clearly stated, but the fundamental idea behind a natural born citizen is that the person would have deep ties to the country, to the culture, to the system of government that we have because they grew up in this country with parents who lived in this country, identified with this country as a citizen of this country. I mean, we look at what happened with the birthers. Are we gonna have a double standard there as well? You had Obama who had a foreign-born father who was an American citizen and an American mother. Now the question was, was he born in Hawaii or was he born off of United States soil? But of course, in the case of Ted Cruz, it's exactly the same thing. He has a foreign-born father, he has an American mother, and he doesn't make any bones about the fact that he wasn't born in America. He was born in Canada. And so if we're going to complain about Obama's past, if we're going to complain about the fact that he doesn't seem to have the kinds of connections, and that's essentially it, more than arguing the legal basis of a natural born citizen, the question is, does this person have the values of, Amer of America at heart? And that's something everyone will have to decide for themselves. But I'm very concerned when we look at the fact that he's put this first commercial out in Spanish, is he promoting the values of multiculturalism, which are not tolerance? Multiculturalism is very intolerant of the native cultures in whatever country that it is brought up in, whether it's in America or whether it's in Western Europe, because what they're trying to do is encourage people not to become part of a melting pot, not to become brothers as Americans. They're trying to get people to retain their distinctive cultures, their distinctive languages, which makes it very confusing. Are we going to have English or are we gonna have Spanish as the official language of America in government? It's confusing enough when it's all written in English, we can't agree as to what it says. What are we gonna do when it's multiple languages? But the issue is, does this person have the values of America at heart? It's very easy for someone to come in and to sound like a libertarian. Of course, someone as clever, as well-spoken as Ted Cruz can easily do that. But the question is, is he going to stand for America or is he going to fall back to the roots of his the involvement of his wife with uh, the big banks, with uh, uh, Goldman Sachs. His father worked with the uh, resistance against Castro. I'm sure he has CIA connections. Is he going to be the candidate of the North American Union, or is he going to be the candidate of, the, of America? We have someone with Canadian citizenship reaching out to people speaking Spanish. It sounds to me like he's running for the president of the North American Union. Well, stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk about the technological side of this, and it may be that the crisis that the government is worried about and preparing for in America is maybe one that's not gonna be brought about by the failure of the Federal Reserve, but about robots taking our job. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. 
used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients, extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, for the first time, we have an actual robot reading the news in Japan. Now, of course, this is not the teleprompter uh, Anderson Cooper or people of that ilk. No, this is an actual real robot that they're going to put on as a daily presenter in Japan. TV Tokyo will feature a humanoid robot as one of its main MCs. Now, of course, this is going to be in a kids program, but it is still the first time that a robot has landed a daily TV gig. Of course, they're going to begin by programming the kids to see that this is something that is usual. In America, of course, we've been programmed to see the teleprompters as robots for a long time. But seriously, robots are going to massively displace workers in a very short period of time. Robots, they say, will replace almost half of jobs over the next 20 years, according to an expert from the University of Oxford. Uh, this is a report coming out of Brisbane Times in Australia. They say that robots and computer programs could almost wipe out human workers and jobs, going from cooks all the way to truck drivers. Uh, they say driverless cars, even burger-flipping robots. As a matter of fact, he said in 702 occupations, he believes that 47% of those are going to be overtaken by robots. And he went down very specifically about some areas. For example, he thinks 87% of the jobs in food services will be taken by robots. 75% of the jobs will be taken in transportation and warehouse, and 67% in real estate. Now, of course, you're also going to see cops in the military being rapidly replaced by robots, and that is something that is another level of danger. But just think about the fact that when we have 50% of the people displaced who no longer have jobs, what kind of an economic catastrophe crisis is that going to create? That is a depression. That is something that is very dangerous in and of itself. Perhaps that is why our government is preparing so hard to put down domestic insurrection, because they know this is coming. They know that it's coming very, very quickly. People will not have jobs. Many of these people that are going to be replaced, people who are flipping burgers, are going to have a very difficult time finding other types of jobs. Of course, they go on to say that he thinks that only 10% of the workers in IT, as, far, as well as software and hardware developers, will be replaced. Of course, what he's doing is he's getting these people to continue to design the ropes that are going to hang them eventually. But of course, in the meantime, they are going to be replaced by foreign workers from India who will work at a much lower wage base. So if they don't export the jobs to another country, if they don't turn them over to robots, they will bring in cheaper wage base workers to take those jobs. Nevertheless, it looks very, very troubling for the economy and for political unrest that will follow that kind of massive unemployment. He goes on to say, in the long term, yes, uh, we will see machines that will be potentially so intelligent as to have goals that aren't consistent with our own. Yeah, and then it starts to get pretty scary. And that's what Steve Wozniak has now come on board saying. He's joined the chorus of tech entrepreneurs who are concerned about the rise of robots and the rise of artificial intelligence that could come after us. Now, of course, we've talked to Hugo de Garris, who wrote The Artelec War. He thought that there would be a massive pushback as people started to realize how dangerous potentially these robots could become started to see them not so much as replacing their jobs, but seeing them as a threat to the human race, saying that they're going to be so intelligent they may just uh, keep us as pets or they may extinguish us altogether, as Steve Wozniak is saying. But it may even be something even more prosaic. The art -like wars could begin not over these godlike intelligences that would compete with us uh, for dominance. It could begin 
by these robots just becoming burger flippers and putting everybody out of work. But Wozniak goes on to say that he has uh, grave predictions. He says computers are going to take over from humans, no question. And, of course, he joins Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, they say, who has been the most vocal about his concerns about AI, calling it the biggest existential threat to mankind. And I thought this was interesting. He's become an investor, of course, in some of these AI companies like DeepMind and Vicarious. And he says it's not from the standpoint of actually trying to make any investment return. He says, I just want to keep an eye out on what's going on because he's very concerned about it. And you all should be. One of the first places you're going to see this is when the when you're taking out of your car, not just if your job is as a driver in the transportation industry, but when you're taken out of your ability to move yourself around freely in this country, when every bit of movement that you have is controlled by the government, they will be controlling those computers going on there. They're rolling this technology out now very rapidly. Chevy is now putting out a parent uh, capability to spy on their teens because, you know, those teenagers, just like the uh, valets when you park your Corvette, you got to worry about them. So they're going to give you surveillance tech to uh, keep an eye out on them. And, of course, you can pay extra to get that and to help them work the bugs out. This is what they're telling us in Wired Magazine. They say teenagers are terrible. Yes, but Chevy has got the solution to that. They're going to have a teen driver nanny mode available on the 2016 Chevy Malibu. It'll do things like muting the radio if the front seat drivers aren't wearing their seat belts. It'll also allow parents to put limits on their car that's associated with that specific key fob so they can't disable safety features like stability, traction control, parking assist, daytime running lights, etc. So they're going to have all this. And here's the killer app right here. The feature will let parents see a report of total distance driven, maximum speed traveled, how many speed warnings were issued, see if there's any anti-lock or stability control events, or in other words, driver screw-ups, just like the valet mode that they put on the new Corvette. Let me explain to you that this is exactly the technology that our government is going to use against human drivers until they ban us all together, as Elon Musk pointed out at South by Southwest last week. That's what's happening in the future. Eventually, humans will be banned from driving cars of any way, shape, or form. But in the interim, they are going to harass us mercilessly. There won't be any highway patrol. It'll be much worse than that. Everything you do will be logged and ticketed and fined. Your insurance company will know about it as well, so they can add that to your bill. They will pester and hound you to the extent that you won't be able to drive. Once they get you out, and you'll be begging, you'll be begging at that point, for an autonomous driven car because you won't be able to meet their specifications. You'll constantly be getting fined. You'll be begging for the autonomous car. And of course, some people are already begging for it. In another article from Wired Magazine, this writer is talking about the Mercedes robocar that premiered at the Consumer Electronics Show back in January of this year in Las Vegas. And of course, that was the big theme of the Computer Electronics Show this year was the autonomous driving cars. There were a slew of those. Of course, the one that got the most attention, the one that was the most complete, was the Mercedes Robocar. And as he points out, he's looking for, and this is a headline in the article, a shinier, safer world. That's always been the promise of technology, hasn't it? From the flying cars that we were promised back in the 1950s to now these wonderful autonomous cars that will never wreck because I guess they won't be programmed by humans. They won't be programmed by the same people who programmed the blue, blue screen of death for Microsoft. It will never have to worry about them just having runaway acceleration, as we've seen in so many of the cars, so many different brands of cars have suffered from that problem. No, they're just going to put all of these systems that they've been uh, setting up on the cars, they're going to put them all together all at once. And he celebrates the idea that we are looking forward to the death of driving. That's another part of his article here. He says, there will come a time within a few decades when the people simply will not drive anymore. And he says already, the steering wheel in this Mercedes is largely vestigial. He says, this isn't even a car that anyone would want to drive. It's heavy, it's cumbersome, it's slow. And he says he can't wait to get in it and not drive. Yeah, he's going to become one of the Eloy that we saw in the time machine from H.G. Wells, one of these passive pink little flabby things that can no longer think or do anything for themselves. That's what they're looking forward to. But of course, it's already begun. We've seen just this last Friday, I believe it was, an automated car is going to drive without a driver, 
all the way from San Francisco to New York. That has already begun. That's underway. And of course, Elon Musk, uh, Tesla, even though he's concerned about the rise of the robots, even though he's concerned about uh, people uh, losing out to these rising machines, he says that uh, he's going to make your Tesla drive itself. And listen to his time frame. We keep hearing this is decades in the future. They, they want to they wanna make people feel comfortable with this, that it's not something that's going to happen immediately. It's going to happen much, much sooner than that. They're going to phase it in, of course. First, they'll have these kind of nanny systems like uh, Chevy is putting into their cars now as an option. But the CEO of Tesla is saying that the next big software update for the Model S will roll out in 90 days. 90 days. And what's it going to have in 90 days? An auto steering function that will make the car largely autonomous on the highway. In between cities, it will drive itself. We'll still need to drive it once you get into town. But it will drive itself between cities. And that's not next year. It's not a decade from now. That's 90 days from now. This is all happening much, much sooner than you think. This will happen in our lifetime. And we should be very concerned because when we lose the freedom to move around freely, that is the kind of control over your life that you have never seen before. But that is the goal. That's one of the aspects that the federal government is moving towards, controlling our transportation, not just at the TSA, but our very movement around on the roads from place to place. Well, stay with us right after the break. Alex Jones is going to give us the background and what's really behind Operation Jade Helm. We'll be right back. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. It's all a PSYOP. The threat fusion centers, the militarization of police, military on the streets, TSA on the streets. During the Boston bombing, half the houses in the city searched without warrants. Women drug out of their homes at gunpoint. It's all an exercise of power. It's all a conditioning program to train the American people to accept what is only normal in third world dictatorships. Will we allow our journey towards despotism and tyranny to be complete? Or will we turn the situation around? and restore our beloved republic. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. We need to make sure too that uh, whenever we knock on doors, people refuse to leave, we need to make note, call it in. They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn, and instructions to disarm anyone inside. You said guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. I am responding tonight directly 
to the Southern Command based in Florida, NORTHCOM based in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and to the foreign forces that have seized control of the District of Columbia and are now dismantling our constitutional republic. My name is Alex Jones. I'm an American and a Texan, and for 20 years I've been on air fighting the globalist agenda, their attempt to dismantle our country and our basic freedoms. No one can deny that basic American liberties are being eroded, that the Constitution is being ignored, that the executive branch is seizing control, dissolving our borders, signing us on to foreign treaties that kill our sovereignty. It's all out in the open. Recently, we reported on a public document put out by the U.S. Army Special Operations Command about a two-month training mission to be carried out in eight states. In the document, Texas, Utah, and conservative areas of Southern California are listed as hostile areas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just looking at this one document by itself, though we've broken it down. We're looking at the larger spectrum of the transformation of our military and police into a domestic paramilitary force. That's now big mainstream news. I was the first person back in 96 to really start hammering this, not because I was that smart of a person, but because the emergency manager of Kingsville, Texas, the police chief of San Antonio, and others reached out to me and said that they had been recruited to government meetings by Clinton with Army Special Operations to gauge whether or not they could condition the public to accept military occupation and gun confiscation. The military basically rebelled against this, leaked the information, and the program was shelved. Under Bush, it began to grow again, and under Obama, it has exploded. So tonight, I am addressing the general enlisted, the non-commissioned, and the commissioned officers. Now, high-level commissioned officers pretty much have the whole picture. They're not compartmentalized. That's why you've seen a major purge of hundreds of generals and thousands of other officers, the biggest in modern history, because they wouldn't go along with the litmus test of accepting uh, what the globalists wanted to do with our military, turning it into a domestic control force over the people. The reason I'm addressing the Southern Command and others directly tonight is because Joe Biggs and others in our office have been contacted and basically told to back off and shut up. Um, Military.com, Stars and Stripes, foreign newspapers, you name it, have all come out in the last 24 hours and attacked us. Uh, Bloomberg has attacked us by name, The Daily Beast, you name it, and even then linked to other people's news reports that are discredited in an attempt to make us look like liars. So there's a major PSYOP going on. Uh, they just legalized last year domestic PSYOPs to be carried out against the American people. So before I get specifically uh, into the documentation, I just want to direct you to Stars and Stripes, uh, where they basically call us conspiracy theorists, basically say we're endangering the lives of the military, and that none of this has to do with martial law. Obviously, the only truth here is that all this training has dual use and can be used overseas as well. We are not attacking the military. We are not attacking... Uh, any of the people even involved in this. We are exposing and attacking the policy of turning the military into a police state tool, which has been going on covertly behind the scenes for decades and is now coming to a head. Look at this foreign headline. Conspiracy, U.S. Special Forces exercise said to be training for martial law military coup. No, it is training to condition the public to accept military on the streets, which their document even says. Now, let's go through some of the history of this first, just to give you some background. In case some of you at Southern Command didn't do your homework or need a refresher course. Forbes magazine, highly respected. How the U.S. military would crush a Tea Party rebellion. Was also in the Washington Times Associated Press. Defense Department guide calls founding fathers extremist. Even Fox News reported on that, where they told them don't be evangelicals or part of the Tea Party. Uh, I mean, th this is going on. This is happening. 
fusion centers, expand criteria to identify militia members, and they have the Army involved tracking that. This is a key document from the RAND Corporation, a stability police force for the United States, justification and options for creating U.S. capabilities. This was the plan I saw back in the late 90s, and then they've updated it for everything we've seen. And we're talking about checkpoints, highway shutdown, uh, highway barriers blocking all the major roads, gun confiscation that we saw back during Katrina. Any excuse they've got, they try this. Canada had floods last year. They had gun confiscations uh, there as well. Here's another one. Army-sponsored report suggest new police force for the United States run by the Army. So the Army is expanding its jurisdiction over the U.S. We know the military, historically, is one of the most dangerous things domestically that ends up taking over. Look at third world countries. Look at Mexico. Look at North Korea. They don't want us to discuss that the powers that be are moving us very quickly in this direction. Here's one out of Stars and Stripes. Uh, Brigade Homeland Tour starts October 1st, also at Army.mil. So, again, we're conspiracy theorists. This isn't for domestic operations. You're not getting rid of Posse Comitatus. You didn't list Texas and Utah as hostile. Yes, you did. Before Fox News last year reported on how they threatened everybody at Fort Hood with court marshals if they were evangelicals or part of the Tea Party— I was already given the information by Army PSYOPs. And why do you think PSYOPs was upset? Because they understand PSYOPs are being run against the American people. And these aren't PSYOPs to free Vietnam or PSYOPs to arm people in another country. These are PSYOPs to take our freedoms. And it's damn treason. So let's stop living in a fairyland where you guys engage in a new PSYOP and say that I'm making all this up. Here's another one. U.S. military to visit Vancouver. ESPN. They had U.S. military helping police Canadians in 2010. I'm just showing you that this is global. This is happening all over the world. Look at this. Scouts trained to fight terrorists and more. New York Times. They trained to take on disgruntled veterans with guns. I knew about this when this was secret. Nobody believed me. People said, oh, these are kids. They were 14 then. This article was six years ago. These guys are now, most of them, in the military. They've been training since they were little kids to take on veterans. Who does Homeland Security say in their own reports is the number one enemy? Returning veterans, gun owners. People didn't believe those secret documents when we released them seven years ago. So that's the reality of what's going on. Gun confiscation training in Arcadia, Iowa. So for Southcom that hopes the enlisted people and the non-commissioned officers are ignorant, and that you just believe that I'm a liar because your commanders tell you so, you are being conditioned. You are being prepared to accept this. And it's not just here. All over the Western world, tyranny is being established. I'm not saying that the military is going to invade Texas this summer and take over and have a military coup then. It's being done to condition the military and the police that it's all normal so in the future this can be incrementally phased in. That's the stated plan by the RAND Corporation and others. I've made four films, Police State 2000, Police State 2 The Takeover, Police State 3 Total Enslavement, Police State 4 The Rise of FEMA, documenting it. Just today, FEMA came out and said, if states don't accept global warming taxes and global warming regulations and ban all wood stoves and barbecue pits, we'll put it all on screen, that you won't get any disaster relief that's your own state money they took. That's the power of FEMA, the power to tell you where you can build and what you can do, and FEMA's COG, continuity of government, and their InfraGuard, and their clergy response teams turning citizens into Humet spies. The Army all knows this. You've been training for decades for it, but before it was a small part of the training, now it's becoming the main mission. Just like Homeland Security said three years ago, their new mission isn't fighting radical Islam, it's fighting domestic groups, and at the top of that was veterans. Militaries are always used to bring in tyranny. Who can deny Obama has just dissolved the borders without any congressional authority? Who can deny they're shutting down the power plants with no congressional authority under carbon taxes? Who can deny the FCC just seized control of the internet? Who can deny you're getting EAS alerts on your phones from the president? 
Who can deny the internet kill switch Obama has? Who can deny they put our military under NATO command? Who can deny that by every yardstick we're losing our freedom? So remember, the most psyoped people are those inside the government. They keep you compartmentalized. They keep you in the dark and feed you crap. And now they're there telling you, there's no militarization, there's no plan, there's nothing going on. Is that why I was told by top level state people, head emergency managers, major police chiefs on video, I didn't discover this. I was warned by patriots on the inside and I have steadfastly been exposing this and fighting it and trying to hold it back. And that's the most important message I've got for people out there watching today. In closing is this, by us exposing this and pointing out that our country was founded about not having military stationed domestically over the people, by my exposing and your exposing that, we keep them from being able to roll this out in a silent stealth takeover and we make them do it openly with debate, which makes it almost impossible. I have literally, in 20 years on air, seen thousands of mainstream news articles conditioning the public to accept this. I remember just five years ago, they had news articles in Southern California where they'd have Marines at checkpoints with machine guns aimed at cars searching people's vehicles for DWI. That's not what the Marines are supposed to be doing. And I'm not against the Marines when I say that. They always say that we're against the military. No, we're against the military being used improperly and in a treasonous way. Finally, we had a former ranger call into the show today. And he was talking about how he was going to hike the Appalachian Trail and ran into U.S. military, went and searched it, and found out they set up a pr permanent force on it to basically break the 800-mile choke point that people could walk from the north to the south or vice versa. I mean, this is going on everywhere, ladies and gentlemen, because the globalists are aware of the fact that the people of the planet are waking up. And so we told the truth about militarization of police. Now it's admitted. We told the truth about the threat fusion centers being established uh, to surveil and spy on the people without warrants. We accurately broke down for you what's going on. And if the system can stop a debate about this, they can successfully hoodwink the people, the military, and the media to go along with it. That's why it's our jobs as citizens, as patriots, as people that want to restore our republic, to get the word out, to force a debate about posse comitatus, and to simply get the people to start discussing how many liberties we've already lost. The tyranny is accelerating. But for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. There's also a huge awakening happening at the same time. So go see all four of my films for free online, the Police State series. Tune into the radio show where we break all this down and be part of the solution, not part of the problem. To have the Army involved in domestic propaganda is truly disgusting. This is a joint forces operation, and it is an attempt to see if they can engage in a PSYOP to prepare us for the takeover down the road. Great job to the crew and great job to all the folks giving us the intel. I'm Alex Jones signing off until tomorrow. Remember, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.